We're focusing now on uh, questions regarding national development. Uh, there's been several concerns raised. I mean, uh, you know, on one hand, we'll talk about whether or not there's going to be state police. Of course, you already know different regions doing something about security. Uh, you have the Northeast Development Commission, you have the Niger Delta Development Commission. There's a bill which has passed second reading, we understand, for the Southwest Development Commission. And several attempts being made to amend Nigeria's constitution. The, remember the latest one, which the legislators, they want to amend the law to ensure that uh, the leadership in the legislature in the country have what they say is immunity. Some of them argue that oh, if the governors and the executive arm enjoy some of this, why not they who are making the laws? And so back to that question when people just think all of these piecemeal adjustments, do we just go ahead and bite the bullet? Discuss whether or not we should have state police or federalism. How do we approach and proceed with all of this? We've got two gentlemen here in the studio to give us their perspective on this matter. But first of all, looking at all of these things that are playing themselves out in the country and then the amendments that are being done, do you share the, agree with those who think that, look, these amendments for them, they don't think it addresses the key issue to get the country moving? Is it that they don't see things from a broader perspective or they are seeing things from their own perspective? Well, I have a feeling that um, they're beginning to resign themselves to the fact that they do not have total control over the way things should go. And they're trying to push in the direction that within which they have jurisdiction. Um, limited reviews, new bills, and so on. Um, ultimately, the move for a broad review of the Constitution goes beyond the National Assembly. It, it's going to be something that will be a national pressure that will force the executive to set up the appropriate review committee, uh, working with every other sector to get the change that we want. But that is not happening. There is no indication that the present uh, presidency wants to get into that area. And so the legislature is uh, doing its own little bits within its uh, limited capacity. I think that's what is happening right now. If we can't get the total package, let's do what we can do. How effective do you think that can be, given yeah? that? How effective do you think the efforts of the legislature can be, given that it's not executing like the executive? Well, it will only be limited. To, because to review the Constitution, to change the Constitution, you need, the processes are big. They are big processes. They are complex processes. Uh, you first have to uh, get the people involved. You have to do all kinds of public sittings. And once you get the thing through, you still have to get the concurrence of two-thirds of the legislatures in the country and so on. So it's not uh, something that... Uh, uh, can be contemplated by only one arm of government. Particularly, the executive arm is not interested. So you need that concurrence. If you don't get it, you are only going to be able to scratch the surface. Do you think this is just scratching the surface? Certainly, it is scratching the surface. You see, there is a contradiction, a major contradiction in the way Nigeria is structured. Nigeria, theoretically, is a federal state. Yes which means that powers are shared between the central government and regional government, in this, in this case, states. But when you look at the Constitution, 68, 68 items are on the exclusive list, which the federal government controls. 30 are on the concurrent list. So there is a contradiction between what Nigeria professes to be, which is the federal state, and what it is in reality as provided for in the Constitution. That is why there is this struggle to see how you know, the contradiction could be resolved. That's why the National Assembly comes up, tries to think out the constitution one way or the other. It is scratching the surface because it is not the job of the National Assembly to you know, fundamentally change the constitution. Yeah. It's the constant assembly that ought to do that. Do we have that facility in the Nigerian constitution? Yes, they, 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 I mean, of course. I mean, 
when there is a police school with the executive is interested and everybody is interested, just as we have identified the fact that there is the need for some change and to resolve the lopsidedness and the contradiction. That's why you see, in fact, states are encroaching into the exclusive list already. This issue of uh, regional police and all that, it is poaching into those 68 items on which the federal government only is supposed to exercise, you know, control and authority. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, they are, like I said, they are 68 so items on the exclusive list. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those, those items are items that the federal government alone is supposed to exercise authority on, legislate on and all that. Mm -hmm. And then there are other 30 items that are on the, you know, concurrent list. So. Now, this exclusive list, you know, policing and all that, those issues are on that list. But so, uh, theoretically, states are not supposed to, you know, be able to exercise authority on those issues. They are pushing into it because that is what the right thing ought to be. So, yep. that is why there is this frenzy to try to see how to, you know, tinker with the Constitution mm. to at least adjust it to, you know, reflect federalism as much as possible. But it's stretching the subject because it's not the job of national to do that. It's the job of a constituent assembly. But you, the, the security issue that you mentioned, you know, if we re reference it a little bit, uh, you know that that list that you're talking about talks about the function of defense and not of security because the same constitution says that the job of securing the people, the security and welfare of the people shall be that of government. It didn't say federal or state. It says government. And we often say that the governor is the chief security officer of the state. So perhaps that's why the, the governors are able to champion what they are championing. Well, if you look at it very closely, you see that the, 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 the police is centralized, controlled by the federal government. Yeah. The appointed by the, governor, by, the, by the president, the commissioners appointed by the general police. That is the structure. But... You know, the states have struggled to see how they could. Of course, the, the governor is the chief security officer, but he doesn't control the police. So what the governors are trying to do now is to, you know, seize the initiative so that they will not just be chief security officer in theory, but in practice. And of course, it's a good thing because uh, the closer the police is to the people, the better. And that is also why I talked about a contradiction. The fact that the police are supposed to be as close to the people as possible, the governor is supposed to be the chief security officer, yet... The police itself is under the federal government. The IG is appointed by the federal government. The IG in turn appoints the uh, commissioners of police that answer to the IG and not the government. Those are the contradictions that, uh, you know, uh, somehow we have to find a way to resolve. No. I'm sorry, sorry, Kadi. The, this effort that by the governors, uh, they have gotten to a point where the governors in the different regions are saying, look, you know what, we need to begin to collaborate, which is tending towards what some people are calling regional security now. And some people are alluding that, hey, aren't we already going in the way of the First Republic, where the regions are strong on their own and the federal, the, the, the federal government is not as strong as the different regions uh, in terms of security now? No, no we, have not, we, have not got, <laughs> we are not going in that direction at all. Uh, what you have with this um, tech one code, these are vigilante groups, they're not police. Oh. Yeah, so some, some, will, some will disagree with you on that. Well, they are vigilante because the constitution of Nigeria is clear. No, no state can have a police yet unless you review it. Mm. But the, national, the state assemblies can make laws for good governance and order mm. in, within their area of jurisdiction. And that's what we are doing. The Lagos state has uh, the neighborhood security even before the... Uh, and there was no problem about it. Mm. Uh, in the second, you know, before we had all these uh, Bakasi boys and all that, they were vigilante groups. They were not police. Okay. Uh, and the police, they, they all usually get the police to approve what they are doing. They usually are not supposed to carry arms and so on. And those are uh, distinctions between them and the police. So they are vigilante and they are allowed. And governors have uh, just woken up in some areas to see that they need them. Uh, they've never always needed them because of the recent developments have led to that. If you don't mind me butting in, uh, different governors in the different regions mm. seem to be looking in the same direction now. The Northeast is talking about is thinking about it. The Northwest is th thinking about it. The, the uh, North Central is considering something like that. The Southeast is also, you know, working somewhere along that path. Uh, it would seem like the regions are beginning to take that, collaborate, and the governors are 
collaborating regionally yes. to take their destinies into their hands. Yes, they are, but that needs to be encouraged. Is that in any that way... Is not to say... So that, sorry, is that yeah. in any way pointing to some uh, agitation for regional uh, governance? It would be nice if it moves in that direction of taking away some powers, more powers from the federal. What we're looking at is greater devolution of powers, which some people call the structuring. Uh, and getting a lot of the powers of the federal government, which ought not to be there right now. Uh, but I don't think that will mean weakening the federal government. Uh, sharing power does not necessarily weaken. It means that it will even make the federal government stronger and more efficient in those areas that are left within its jurisdiction. But is that word appropriate for you, the word structuring? The structuring? Yeah. Well, you know... You know, when you, when advocacy is about finding the right emotive word. Uh, uh, what emotive you, word? Yes, yeah. When you are, when you are, you know, when you are pushing the cause, it's like political uh, campaign, change, you want change. And that's what everybody locks into. Even after all, you don't even know what the change is all about. That's where it is. Uh, make America great again. You are looking for an emotive... Uh, uh, signal that you can that people can associate with, but uh, definitely, like uh, what I would say, there is need to look at our constitution. The federal government has too much powers, and that's why when um, I was looking at this South uh, West Development, Development Commission, yeah. I mean, there's a contradiction between you agitating to start that and struggling for restructuring. But at the end of the day, the South West Development Commission will be a federal government agency. Mm -hmm. The president of Nigeria will still appoint all his officers. So what point are you making by creating that? Are you trying to, is that a replacement for restructuring? Does that suggest to you that, mm -hmm. you know, the governor, government may not be as serious with uh, touching the, go the constitution as uh, he has said? Yeah. Well, it, it seems so. It seems the government is not enthused about, yeah. you know, um, carrying out the fundament, fundamental changes on the constitution and by implication the structure of the country. But let me first come to the word restructuring. It, it, it seems as if um, when you say restructuring, oh, you are, you are doing a path that, you know, the establishment does not like. Restructuring simply means to change the structure of an institution or polity for, you know, uh, 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 more effective performance. What is wrong in that? If you see that the structure of a polity or an institution is not working fine, and you decide to change it for efficiency, is there anything wrong with that? So when people use the word restructuring, and I see people say, oh, don't use that word. I, I, no, 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 we're wondering if it captures the essence of what people actually want. Because, of course, when people use that, some people say it means different things to different people. So it may be motive for a certain group of people, but maybe for others, because you, you, don't forget, you also said if government is interested, certain machineries will put in motion. So if, they, if people are not interested, of course, it won't be motive to any one of them. Yes, but we have to look at the meaning. That is what it means. Hmm. To change, you know, the way a, a polity or a situation is organized for better performance, for efficiency. What is wrong with that? You know, we all agree that the structure of Nigeria as it is, is lopsided, it's not... There's a contradiction, just like I said before. Mm. And if we now want to effect a change, you know, in the, in the way it is organized for better performance and efficiency, nothing is wrong with that. And that will, of course, mean, you know, moving towards uh, more powers to the states and all that. And then, of course, taking some more powers from the 68 we have, you know, to add to the 30 that, you know, we have in the concurrent list. Okay, we'll come back to this and take a look at what other practical steps can we take or should we take to ensure that we address the challenges that we face. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. It's our closing moments with both professors. You've got a question. Yeah, Professor Rory, if we say that about 30 states are unviable, that's pretty much saying most of the states are unviable. So obviously we see that there is a major challenge. And when I say we, I mean the federal government, you know, the legislature and other, you know, concerned parties. If we know that restructuring means to make something more efficient, I think the challenge here is how to go about it. 
So how do we go about this restructuring such that there's a consensus? Well, um, first we need to address the constitution. Uh, there are several ways through which you can do this. Um, you recall that uh, before the last election, general election, the ruling party set up a committee headed by the governor of Kaduna State to also address this question of the, the structure of Nigeria, federalism and all that. Yet, if you look at the report, the recommendations are very similar to the 2014 report the Na of National Conference and the 2005 National Political Reform, Reform Conference. So there are several ways by which we can go, go about it. Now, Nigeria, we don't have a lot of money. The 2005 uh, conference cost about a billion naira. The one of 2014 cost seven billion naira. We don't have that much money at this time. So I won't even say we should set up another you know, conference, another committee. And all. We can you know, build on the report of that um, Nasir Rufai committee and the other two, the 2005 and 2014 reports. All, all that needs to happen is for the legislature and the executive to meet and then set the machinery in motion for, you know, legislating that will enable, you know, the, the, the reports to be harmonized. Right. And then either to third of uh, parliament or better still, a referendum. Mm. And then that will now lead to a new, con producing a new constitution mm. for Nigeria, which will address that lopsidedness we talked about before, where the federal government has 68 items, the concurrent list has just 30 items, so that these states can be strengthened. Take, for instance, mining. The mining, mining in Nigeria is exclusively federal government uh, 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 issue. So states that have minerals to, that they could you know, benefit from, they can't. You know, electricity generation and things like that, things that can make states viable. The structure of the country, as provided by the Constitution, simply you know, emasculates the states. And that is why they are where they are. You know, just recently, Prof, the vice president seemed to tilt to the side of states, saying that, you know what, states can actually generate more revenue. And some were saying, just maybe the executive is also saying, let's look into this. Especially because before that, the vice president had also said, you can't expect this vast, you know, mass of land to be policed uh, by the amount of police we have, perhaps letting credence to state police. Yes. So do you think from some of the statements that the executive might be looking into that too? I don't think so. Uh, I, you see, we all know what is wrong with our constitution. We've talked about it several times. And like he said, there are reports that you can dust up. The bottom line is the president. That is the bottom line. Somebody has to persuade him to think that we need to look at our constitution. But, but at that point where he was giving his speech, I think about the new year or the budget, he yes. said, look, all of this... Uh, changing or restructuring or yes. whatever, they, however they describe it, yes. the box stops or lies with the National Assembly. That's and what that, he said. You no, know, it doesn't lie with the National Assembly. That's not, uh, well, I don't know. The uh, National Assembly um, has its own limitations. But the, the, it's, a, it's an executive motivation. You need a president who is willing to encourage change. Fundamental ones, not superficial ones. And you must know the power dynamics of this country. That, you know, there are sections of this country that do not want fundamental change. And so we don't have to deceive ourselves to think that uh, it's a theoretical thing. It's deeply political. The economic interests are involved. If you change things too radically, if you alter, for example, uh, revenue allocation formula and so on, increase derivation, some states will go hungry. So it is about power, the power elite. And where, where is it located today? Who is going to change things for us? It is not, we cannot talk from now to tomorrow. We have the materials. Mm. We have the recipe for change. They are all there in different conferences. Mm. But somebody has to be interested in you have recipe in cooking it up. Just off the cuff. Yes. If you could give an emotive term for this, the, the phase we're entering into, if you could yes. give us a term, what would it be? Which phase is that? An emotive term you talked about, you know, make America great again, change. What term should we use to, you know, proceed into this conversation? About change in Nigeria? Yeah, restructuring. Uh, restructuring? Restructuring. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let, let me ask you, Dr. Raoul, the... Um, you talked about the importance of 
changing the constitution, whether it's to tinker with it or change it outrightly. Yes. The president last year in his June 12 address said there is a need for Nigeria to collaborate, the federal government to collaborate with the states in order to pull 100 million Nigerians out of poverty over the next 10 years. At this time, the world poverty clock is uh, putting the figure around 95 million Nigerians living in extreme poverty. That's not to talk about those who are living in poverty, but the extreme ones is in 90. How, what's the implication if we do not change the country? How, how much of that affects the economy of states and can help you know, uh, pull people out, out of poverty? Well, um, to be fair, pulling people out of poverty cannot be uh, a responsibility of the federal government alone. So the president was right in saying that there will be a need to, you know, for the federal government and the state governments to work closely for this to happen. But, you know, uh, there are fundamentals that, must, that need to be addressed. We need to be more innovative. I just talked about, for instance, mining. If the, if the bureaucracy is taking off, and states that have minerals are able to move swiftly to, to, to harness them. That will increase you know, their, their uh, revenue base and competitiveness. Second, I talked about electricity. We all know that a fundamental problem of us have, Nigeria has at, this, at the moment, is electricity generation. And if we address the fundamentals such that you know, states are not able to come into it and you know, more power is generated than not, it was. So there are several layers in all of this. And if more revenue, I mean, the, the revenue formula is also, you know, tinkered with such that derivation is given prominence, it will encourage those who, are, who think that, oh, there is free, free, uh, you know, free money to get, to be more innovative. All of these will collectively increase revenue base, and by implication, will also, you know, reduce the level of poverty. So the president was right in saying that they need to work together. But the fundamentals will need to be addressed. We we'll will continue to talk about the need to fundamentally alter the structure of the constitution and by implication, the structure of the country. All right, uh, David Awara is a professor of uh, history, that's history and international studies. In Strategic studies. Strategic studies, University of Lagos. And uh, Femi Otubanjo is a professor of political science and also a public policy analyst. Gentlemen, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much.